We're, like, we're looking to automate more of it. So yeah. that com currently is quite manual. Uh, currently, uh, it being manual is somewhat of an advantage because uh, we don't really know what to automate yet. Like, for example, looking for this expiry date, we now know That's good. whenever we have uh, incorrect details, those can be used quite precisely to pinpoint the, the point of compromise. I recently had fraud on my own account, and they got the CVC uh, incorrect, so the, the card security code on the back of the card. And I was immediately like, hmm, here we go, another potential smoking gun. Uh, but unfortunately, it's a CVC which I'd never typed in incorrectly before, so I didn't really uh, know yeah, where it came from. Yeah. Where it came from. I had a CVC once that had a lead zero, and some websites would automatically remove the lead zero and then say it doesn't match the, uh, I got so annoyed. Oh, the Airbnb. Oh my goodness. Right. Yeah, but thankfully now that card is in the past. Well, we have to, uh, when we issue cards, uh, we don't issue cards with an expiry date in February because a large proportion of terminals in the world don't like uh, leap years. And so you just skip that whole problem by never having cards expiring in Feb? F in February on a leap year. Oh, we just yeah. go push them back. Just skip that. We just, that's one way to fix the problem. It's nice. Yeah. When I Because when I spoke to people about this, a lot of people were like, do they have automatic systems doing this all the time, or did they just have to sit down and go through it? So I guess. So I think that we spotted this uh, a lot more quickly than than other banks, and we reached out to those banks, and even at that time, they came back to us and saying we're not seeing any fraud, even at certain points in time where they actually had had some fraud, but they had yet to identify that they they had that fraud. And partly that's because uh, like our, our product has real-time notifications, which gives us a huge advantage because our customers notice fraud really, really quickly. Like the typical time to notice fraud at a, a traditional bank is, is more like 30 days. So even if they've been hit, their customers haven't even noticed it yet. So the customers wait, haven't reported it to them. Yeah. Um, so even at the point at where we were like communicating with the banks and saying, this is what we're seeing, are you seeing it? Uh, they were saying, oh, we're not really seeing any of that yet. And then like a month later, they said, actually, we." We did have some of that, but it hadn't been reported to us yet. Because I occasionally get, if I use the Monzo card, I'll get the, I can fill my phone by break with the alert before it's finished going through um, the machine. So I guess you get a very quick turnaround on, on yeah. that alert. Because the other banks, I mean, they have very, very smart people try, like doing exactly the same stuff. We, most of our advantage comes from we have very, very new technology, which lets us do it a lot more quickly. And our new technology also warns us to tell us to do the analysis more quickly because our customers report fraud to us. So we have like a fraud attack, our customers report it to us, we then can immediately do some analysis and within minutes have like results coming back. Whereas uh, the fraud teams at other banks, they're kind of hampered by the technology a bit. They're sometimes like, oh, our tool doesn't let us do that. So you have to like export it to Excel and then manually look up a whole bunch of stuff where we can just like very, very quickly. Excel, whereas you got the system. And if you spot something new like this, you know, mistake in the date, you can alter your own system to then incorporate that or to have the tools available. So yep. you're quite agile, I guess. Could yep. you, how big is the team of people who are doing this? Uh, I'm going to get this wrong now. Ballpark, we've got like 16 people on the team. Okay. Um, most of them are engineers. We also have some analysts um, who do operational work. Um, yeah, so we have 60 people that split across financial crime and, and security. We're about to split into two teams. Right. You're almost big enough to be two separate. Yeah. Nice. And how did you get into this kind of work? What did you do to? Um, so I was the first engineer on the team. Oh, really? So like the team didn't really exist. And then as we evolved our company structure and split up into multidisciplinary teams, uh, I was the first engineer on the team. Oh, back Daniel, in go form a team of you. <laughs> so back in 2016, uh, we had a very different type of fraud. Um, so we had the prepaid card at the time, and you could top up uh, using a debit card from another bank because we're a prepaid card wanted to like validate that people wanted our product. Um, but that was the only way that you could get money money into the product. Right. So the fraud that we would typically see there were people who purchased stolen debit cards uh, and then use those stolen debit cards to top up a Monzo card because then you turn what are effectively online card details into a physical card that you can then easily purchase physical goods, uh, which is quite, quite or withdraw from an ATM, which is quite lucrative for, yeah. for criminals. Um, so at that point in time, uh, we were losing about 0.84% of all money that was topped up oh, through wow. Monzo to fraud. Now we're a much smaller company back then, so the absolute amounts were not so high compared to That's what we point. deal with now. Uh, but like that was that was not sustainable. So if we continued that kind of fraud rate until now, we'd probably have gone bankrupt already. So uh, I very quickly got said, like, there's a problem. Go go and go and fix, fix that. Fix this problem. So quite a lot of our analysis is usually 
on that quite reactionary in that uh, we see some fraud and we say, okay, what rules can we have put in place such that we would have uh, blocked a large proportion of that fraud and not blocked a large proportion of, of genuine right. transactions? It's quite hard to predict like where the forces are going to go. Like yeah. they change around. Like one week they're they're using a whole bunch of online merchants buying like effectively gift cards to resell because that's quite that's easy, easy for them to turn back in, into cash. The other week they're they're using like high end uh, clothes retailers. They just change around. Hmm. Okay. What we'd like to see is um, the w one thing that I found quite interesting was that they didn't just take the the list of cards and just like indiscriminately just take portions of them and, and hit them. They seem to separate them out by bank. So we would get, we would see like a, a pattern of compromise here and then when we compared notes with like Nationwide, they would see a similar pattern but just on different days. Like oh. they clearly split by bank and we, pro I think we like got hit first and they're probably because we were seeing either a new bank, they're new bank. less likely to spot us. And what I'm hoping to see is that in future, they'll like say, oh, don't go near those cards. Man, that's like some unofficial <laughs> leaderboard of what order they hit the banks. Yeah. And if you go, yeah, if you have good fraud protection, you go to the bottom of the list. Oh, that's good. That's a good, good achievable outcome. <laughs>